the second half. Here comes Good. Good and gonna score the two and one. Full drive inside. Stop. Hang on a pivot. Turn around. Jump shot is good. Jordan Battle with a nice spin move. Kicks it down low. Vardon. Big Maple with the finish. What's up, everybody? Another episode of the Straight Out Whack podcast coming to you on this Labor Day. Uh, like we had, we had Bearcats play by play, new play by play voice, Carlos Zimmerman, earlier today. Today, I have a special guest, ACU on air talent, Joseph. I want to say Chapa. Is that how you say your last name? Chapa? Chapa, yes, sir. There you go, Chapa. Joseph Chapa joining me today. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter. Uh, Joseph, give him your handle that they can follow you on Twitter. My handle for Twitter and Instagram and pretty much everything is at Joseph D. Chapa. There you go. So follow this. What, I, I assume you're class of 2025 when I look at your Twitter bio. Is that right? That is correct. I just started my sophomore year this year. I feel extremely old, folks. That somebody <laughs> I have on the podcast is in the class of 2025. That will be 25 years since I graduated high school. That is crazy. Wow. Time crazy. flies, man. Time does fly. It really does. It really does. Uh, Joseph, tell people what exactly you're going to be doing with your on-air stuff for ACU TV, I believe it is. Um, you also do stuff with the broadcast on ESPN+. Plus. And um, considering I'm in Utah – you're also a Lakers Nation guy, too, so uh, you might have to break us down here. But let, let's talk about this ACU TV on-air talent gig and what you'll be doing for the Wildcats in 2022-23. Well, first off, thank you, Kyle, for inviting me on. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored to be here, um, be able to represent not only ACU, but our department, the journalism department here at ACU. And ACU TV is where I'm uh, one of their on-air talents. And uh, man, ACU TV is such a blessing, and we have a great team uh, led by Hutton Harris, who's our uh, head director. I like to call him my my coach, Sean McVay, or you know my Bill Belichick, because you know that, that's essentially what you are in the broadcast uh, realm. Is you're a coach, and and not only do you coach in uh, speaking or editing or producing, but you coach in, in life and how that translate all to who you are. Um, as a person. Um, so ACU TV is a live production hub for pretty much of all of all uh, home ACU athletic events. So uh, this past Thursday, I was the color commentator alongside our media relations coordinator, Zach Carlisle, who is phenomenal. He's been phenomenal to learn from, to work with, and uh, just somebody great to talk sports with. And uh, we commentated the ACU versus Lamar football game Thursday Night Lights, the season opener, and that was a that was a great time. Um, a few weeks ago during our welcome week, we call it Wildcat Week here, to welcome all the new students, I interviewed the head football coach, Keith Patterson, and talked to him about the, the team and kind of his first year and how his faith intertwines to who he is as a coach. Um, but heading forward, uh, Kyle, it's more uh, football stuff. I'll be a sideline reporter for the Prairie View game on Saturday, uh, preparing for volleyball and soccer and, and, and doing things also behind the camera because, as Hutton likes to say, and I truly believe this as well, is you want to be an all-around type of broadcaster. Right. Um, you know, I like to use the example that Stephen A. Smith, who I adore, he's – He's like my my LeBron in the broadcasting realm. And uh, what makes him so great and, and really the true MVPs of ESPN are the directors, the associate directors, the camera crew, the, the editors, the producers, because those are all the hands-on people that make you look good in front of the camera. Um, but yeah, Kyle, going forward, uh, just on-air stuff for all the sports. Um, actually coming up, ACU – the College Tour, which is a, a TV show on Amazon Prime, they'll be coming to ACU, do an entire episode of Campus, and I'll be one. Uh, I'll be on one of the segments talking about experimental learning, talking about ACU TV, and and how all the hands-on student learning uh, affects kids like me. That's awesome. That's a great thing to like. Like your, uh, your mentor said, you know, you want to be a jack of all trades when it comes to this stuff. You want to know all the ins and outs behind the scenes, and. Uh, yeah, no, that's a great, great mentality to have and, and great leadership there. Uh, talk about that Lamar game. I think I had a question on Twitter. I'll have to look it up here that someone spewed out when I put out that I was getting on with with you today. Um, I, 
My phone's not letting me log in, but let me find it here. Um, the question was, what were your thoughts on ACU's week one performance versus Lamar? Well, first of all, uh, it was so, you know, for me, it's new because I'm a sophomore, but for people who have, who are juniors and seniors and alumni who've been here in the past, maybe graduate students, they felt the unusualness because it was the first uh, home opener since 2013. And it was really odd because it's on a Thursday, you know, usually on a Thursday, it was the first week week of classes. People are stressed out, you know, and, and you're moving into your dorms and all that, but we had football. Uh, and the tailgates were popping. Everything was great. Um, but talking about the game, Kyle, uh, there were two teams and, you know, not new to each other, but they were new to themselves. And what I mean by that is for Lamar, you know, Coach Blaine Morgan, this is uh, his third season, I believe. But the past two seasons he's been dealing and like all sports coaches across America dealing with the pandemic and the repercussions of that. Uh, but now he finally gets a legitimate chance to build a program. Uh, talking to him uh, last Tuesday before the game, he really wants to build a program and do the little things to eventually win down the line. And I believe that they did show flashes against the Wildcats on Thursday. And same goes for ACU, right? I mean, new head coach, new uh, coaching regime uh, with Keith Patterson at the helm, who you know, obviously from a football standpoint, I think we've seen the air raid offense and aggressive cover four base defense, and it's been phenomenal. But I really love how, um, and I've been connecting with people on the football team and staff and personnel groups. They love what he's done with the program. I mean, he's transformed it. He's made it into an FBS type. Um, He pours into the lives of his athletes. He cares about who they are as young men. Uh, During the interview, one of my favorite quotes that uh, that he shared with me was, he wants them to be better husbands, better fathers, you know, better people in society. Um, But, you know, going back to the football field, it was great because at first it felt like, okay, little Rams chiefs, you know, the seven and seven, 14, 14, but then you feel the unusualness and you're like, all right, it's the first game. You got a young offensive line, young quarterback in Lamar, same goes for ACU penalties. So it kind of lags the game a little bit, but heading to the second half, once ACU kind of settled down and took away Lamar's big plays, uh, Kendall Catalong, the new wide receiver, uh, I believe he's the Z receiver, number two guy for ACU, uh, player of the game, phenomenal guy. Um, it was amazing, man. It, it was great to see both two teams who have been uh, really wanting to get back on the field and show their newness to both their fans and really the conference and the world in general. Nice. I like it. I like the breakdown. There's your answer to the C. <laughs> Martin Salinas, Salinas, Ed Martin Salinas, Salinas. Salinas. Yes, sir. One of my best friends. Yeah, ask the question for you. Uh, So there's your answer, Martin. Good stuff there from Joseph. I I, I know it's football season. You kind of focus on that. Um, You know, volleyball, soccer, all that stuff is going on right now. Basketball-wise, obviously we cover basketball here at Wycoops Digest. And just a disclaimer, we – are looking into possibly expanding coverage of other sports. I just want to throw that out there right awesome. now. We haven't That's thrown great. it out there in a while, but we're th- we're looking into it. Uh, but great. basketball's our main focus. So, um, have you had a chance to talk to Brett Tanner uh, as they get their fall camp underway? Uh, you know, they get Joe Pleasant back after his one year stint at Wichita State. Uh, they do lose, you know, Reggie Miller, Corey Mason, Mikey Morris. I mean, those guys were just winners for Brett Tanner, and, you know, and, and Joel Golding when he was there. Um, but he's got a lot back. I mean, Arian Simmons, uh, Cam Steele, um, Damian Daniels is back, Joe Pleasant, obviously. Uh, so there's some pieces there that are back that I, I think ACU fans are excited about. What have, you, what have you learned from maybe talking to him or seeing them in their fall camp right now? Yeah, Kyle, uh, I have talked to Coach Tanner and and mostly everyone on the team and seen some of the assistant coaches as well as on the women's side, uh, but I haven't really gone deep into their camp and how they are as a team. I've um, I've been really fortunate to really build bonds with them and who they are as students, um, you know, who they are in their extracurriculars, and we've been talking about that. But in the times that I have talked about their fall camp, um, they're excited. I mean, the new recruits, uh, 
They're excited to have them. They're excited to, uh, first of all, being uh, the renovated Moody Coliseum. Right. And let me tell you, yeah, uh, let me tell you that it's not only um, – you know, beneficial for the basketball and the volleyball programs, but us as students as well during chapel and during all these events. But going to basketball, like, you know, you transition from the Teague Center, which I believe ACU Athletics did an amazing job at, at hosting the basketball programs and the volleyball programs uh, in. And now you go to Moody Coliseum. I mean, first class, new training tables, new film room and all that. It helps you as a basketball program. And, and nothing but positive reviews. I think they're really just learning the playbook now, learning the system, learning each other. And as, as the months go by, they're in basketball shape. They're sharpening up their skills, getting their shooting reps in. I think they're excited for November, and they're excited to, to get back on the hardwood. Yeah, I, I you know, Brett, Brett Tanner mentioned that, how it's going to be great for Chapel at ACU with the new renovation and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing it on a week from today. Actually, I will be in Abilene. You, you know that awesome. we've talked about that a little bit. Can't um, wait to see visit it, the ACU campus and check out uh, the newly renovated Moody Coliseum. Um, what about Julie Goodness? You know, crew. I mean, I, you know, they had some ups and downs, but they got you know Bella Errol, Maddie Miller's back. I mean, they got some. They got some players back that I think yeah. she's excited for her squad. I mean, just in the offseason from what you've talked to them or maybe, you know, what they've said, what are your thoughts on them? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Bella Earl, who uh, phenomenal on and off the court, but staying uh, in the hardwood, they really hit the jackpot with her in the recruiting class, Kyle. I mean, uh, just just phenomenal. She can do it all. And not only does uh, she shoot, shoot the ball really well, she creates shots, but she's, um, you know, if she can't get hers, she's going to go to the other column. And that's what makes uh, players great, right? I mean, you look at these star players in the collegiate level, but also in the professional level in the NBA and WNBA, you know, let's say, you know, Bella Earl is, is having an off night, you know, you're one for three, uh, your players aren't going well. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some assists or, well, I'm going to attack the glass, even though I am a guard or a combo, combo forward. Uh, I'm going to attack the glass. I'm going to really prioritize defense. And I think they have a lot of that personnel on the team. Um, you know, they really prioritize grit. They prioritize high motor and high energy because now heading into this season, like you said, you know, and, and be, Maddie Miller coming back is great because she's an established veteran here. She knows what it takes to win, how to build a winning program. And have someone like Maddie in the locker room will just benefit the new recruits and someone like Bella, who's really looking to carry the mantle once someone uh, like Maddie, um, you know, finished it off for last season. But uh, I think they're excited as well as the men's program. They prioritize themselves in high energy, uh, hustle, uh, doing the little things uh, the right way, because all those things add up. That's where uh, you'll see ACU, both the men and women's programs, be competitive in the WAC this year. Did you – so I, I wanted to ask you, did was ACU maybe your first college choice or were you looking somewhere else? How did you end up at, at Abilene Christian? So, Kyle, it was my first and only choice. Um, you know, yes. actually a bit of a backstory. Um, so I graduated – it was my junior year, which was 2020, the, the scary year of our entire country. And sure. it was the last day before we went – off to spring break and ACU visited. Uh, they talked to my SAT and ACT class in the library. And uh, I, I vaguely knew what it was. My mom got her master's there online. Uh, so I had been familiar with it vaguely. Uh, but as they really got into their presentation, talked about uh, the journalism department, talked about the spiritual component, talked about the location and the culture you know, not only did I feel, I'm like, all right, I should really look into this. But my my best friends and my teachers were like, Joseph, I think ACU is a place for you. And at the time I was like, ah, I don't want to think about college right now, man. You know, I'm a junior. I just want to have fun. Little did we know we go on a, on a what was it, like a year spring break because of the pandemic. Basically, and yeah. Yeah. And just, just thinking about it, researching, talking about it with uh, Kenneth Pibus, our department chair here in the journalism uh, department and, and just really seeing how ACU 
impacts the lives of others and what I wanted to do with my career, which is this being an on-air talent uh, for a sports network and, and really valuing the, the Christian and the spiritual component to what we do as college students. It just felt like a perfect match. And after, you know, thinking about it and praying about it, I was happy, happy to be here and uh, yeah, go Wildcats. <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. And you know, it's unique because there's not a lot of schools in the WAC, at least not that I know of right now that have like an ACU TV or a GCU TV. Uh, I know you've, you had UVU TV, but they only use it for specific games. They don't use it for every game or the broadcast crew for it, uh, which is unique in, in this conference. I'm hoping more schools can do it because I love, you know, that Brett Tanner and Julie Goodenough, they have a coaches show on ESPN Plus that you guys produce. Um, that, that's great. That's fantastic. Um, and, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, I may shoot you some some funky questions if you're the host or even to give to your producers yeah. to ask on that show after a game or after a weekend of games that'd for both Julian and Brett. I, I think that'd be fun. That, that would be awesome. And, you know, I just I really appreciate you, Kyle. And to all those who really appreciate what we do at ACU TV, it means a lot to us. Um, you know, we work very hard. Like I said, Hutton Harris, phenomenal. Again, call him the Coach McVeigh or the Greg Popovich of, of broadcasting and, and just really learning from other students, um, not only just on air, but some who are seniors behind the camera, uh, in the control room, videographers, editors. Um, it's just amazing what we do. It's first class. It's one of a kind. And I think all of us in some way or another, we're very grateful for it. I know for me personally, every time I go in front of the camera or I do something for ACU TV or something in this department, something that I've learned to say to myself is, I don't have to do this. I get to do this. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, because it, we're very fortunate. We're very blessed. And our kind of mission this year, our kind of um, identity this, this year is, one, everyone has a place here. If you want to be the next Stephen A. Smith and the next Max Kellerman, or even produce the next sports center, something along those lines, or even like a new show. Um, you belong here. You know, we believe in you. We love you and we cherish you. And we want to work with you. And second is that what, what we do here at ACU TV on ESPN plus and uh, YouTube and social media all across the board, we want to reach everyone we can, even the casual sports fan. If we can uh, make them feel loved, make them feel joyful and, and, and put our school and our department on the map, I uh, think we've done our job and just uh, making the audience feel at home and making them feel uh, enjoying for what we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before we close out this podcast episode, you're also a contributor to is it's Lakers nation, right? It's a uh, Lakers nation.com. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Lakers nation.com. Now I, I want to know as a Utah, I'm, I'm not necessarily an NBA guy. Like I, I, I I'll watch it periodically, but I'm not necessarily an NBA guy. If I was, the Jazz would probably be my team because they're right here in Salt Lake City. Sorry uh, about so that. <laughs> are you a Lakers fan then, or is it just one of those things that kind of door was opened and you're off and running with it? So I'm a diehard Los Angeles Lakers fan. We're uh, not friends so. anymore. We can't be friends. <laughs> well, once we make the Utah Lakers trade for maybe Mike Conley, maybe we'll <laughs> kind of reconcile. Um, you know, back in 2011 um, – you know, before it, it was two seasons before Kobe Bryant, who's one of my heroes, uh, towards Achilles. Um, I just watched him for the first time in my living room and I saw the late, it was Lakers Rockets game. And of course I knew the Rockets, you know, lived in Texas. Everyone knows the Rockets, the Spurs and the Mavericks, but I saw the Lakers. I fell in love with the colors, the brand, the aura. And I saw number 24 and I was like, okay, not only is this guy really good at basketball, but the way he, his mindset, his mentality, his personality, his attitude, I dig that. And ever since then, I've loved the Lakers. And a bit of a backstory that I love to share about how I got onto Lakers Nation. Um, so a year ago, as I was heading into ACU, uh, because I'm a diehard Lakers fan, I followed Lakers Nation ever since LeBron joined the Lakers, which was around 2018, uh, heading into the 2019 season before they traded for Anthony Davis. And I reached out to Ron Gutterman, who is back with us. He's uh, one of the lead uh, talent people and a guy who's really uh, great behind the scenes. And I just said, hey, man, you know, I want to do what you do. Uh, I have aspirations. I'm a diehard Lakers fan. 
how do I do this? How do I go about it? Just asking for advice. And he said, well, uh, hello, <laughs> it's great to, to have you and great to hear from you. And, and he enjoyed that. That's, that's the number one thing that I think college students can learn is that uh, people like yourself and people like in, in Lakers Nation, they love to hear from college students about advice and how to get connected. And uh, he just told me, hey, man, you know, do this, get plugged in, prioritize your schedule, uh, make sure your classes are going well, craft your voice, do your research, all those things. I did that. And, and I've been fortunate enough to do amazing things for ACU TV last year and, and other, and other uh, networks. Then I emailed him in May and I'm like, Ron, I'm back, man. And, and I've been fortunate and blessed enough to do all these things on ESPN+. Plus. And he's like, Dude, you took my advice, and then one thing led to another. Uh, talked to uh, Daniel Starkin, who's uh, one of our managing editors, a great guy. Uh, Matthew Moreno, another great guy who also runs uh, Dodger Blue uh, for the Los Angeles Dodgers for the MLB team. And uh, one thing led to another, and uh, I'm a part of Lakers Nation. Uh, one of the reporters did some uh, did an on air show with Trevor Lane, uh, an amazing guy, knows his stuff well-connected. Uh, they like to say he's a pro's pro, and I definitely agree. And I'm still with them. I just finished writing an evergreen story about who owns the Lakers. As we watch the Lakers documentaries, we're seeing about the Lakers ownership and uh, that type of history. Got to watch today's episode, man. Hope you're watching, Kyle, because that Kobe <laughs> episode, it's going <laughs> to it's gonna make me shed some tears, you know, God rest his soul. But um, that's that's my stint with Lakers Nation. I'm happy to be, be with them. I'm, I'm blessed that they've uh, taken me with open arms and I'm learning from them and building some great connections in the, the NBA. Well, and speaking of Lakers, you can uh, – I'm going to put this out there real quick. Get your Lakers gear fanatics. It's in our description below. Uh, get that ready for your 2022-23 Los Angeles Lakers season. All you Lakers Nation fans that follow Joseph. Joseph Chapa. Ch Chapa. Excuse me. It's I, I don't have the Texas accent. I, 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 I apologize. <laughs> uh, you follow him at Joseph D. Chapa on Twitter, and you said Instagram, correct? That's right? Correct. Most of my social media handles, if not all of them. There you go. So when you see an ACU broadcast, you will most likely see Joseph on the mic. Uh, we're looking forward to a fun basketball season. He'll be on it during home football games. Is that correct for the Wildcats? Correct. We got four more to go. Only got five home games. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, again, follow him on Twitter at Joseph D. Choppa. Uh, and follow us, Wack Hoops Digest. Hit the subscribe button and the like button after you see this podcast episode. Joseph? Enjoy the rest of your Labor Day. Thank you, Kyle. Re really appreciate it. Can't wait to see you on Monday. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.